we'll be ready to go. Listen, I'm I'm blessed today and I'm going to move on because I want to give him some time to minister. Amen. But this is my friend and my brother. Amen. We appreciate him so very, very much. Glory to God. He is. Uh, this one is, I'm going to switch over. That's all right. That's a problem. Switch over. Um, he is going to come and minister to us today. Uh, this man is a powerful, a powerfully anointed man of God and loves the Lord, is excellent teacher. Uh, amen. And he is going to minister and preacher. He's going to minister to us today. And I was glad when we talked and I invited him to come and be a part of our eight o'clock service on his way to Sacramento. Is that all right? Glory to God. I need everybody in here. This is the first time he's been at the valley. So if you all will just stand, glory to God. And would you clap your hands and receive the pastor Broderick Huggins, Bishop Broderick Huggins. Our Father and our God, we love and bless you for another expression of your goodness, grace, and mercy. And as we prepare now to share this word with your people, I pray that you grant to us teaching clarity and preaching power, and that your anointing would pervade this house, edify us through your word, and let your power prevail. Let your strength come, and let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Pray that you would think with my mind, feel with my heart, and speak with my mouth those things that will edify this body, encourage this visionary in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Come on and give God a hand to praise everybody. What a joy it is to be again, be with my friend, my brother and my sister in the person of Pastor Superintendent, in the person of Pastor Gerald Simpkins and Sister Simpkins. Would you give them a hand of love and appreciation? I appreciate their friendship. I appreciate uh, the covenant that we have been able to maintain. Wow, I'm not gonna count the years, but God has blessed uh, this friendship to be one of the most um, valuable relationships in my life. And, I, and I'm so grateful to be here and um, you, have, you have a jewel. And um, I'm on my way to Sacramento, but I, in talking to Pastor Simpkins, I said, you know what, I, it may be a little rushed, but I just wanna see my brother and my sister. Amen. If you can't love the Simpkins, you got some serious issues. Hello, somebody. Amen. Ray Charles can see and Stevie don't have to wonder that the favor of God is on their life. <laughs> Very briefly this morning, and I, maybe when I come back next time, I can preach a little longer, but I want to I've learned that you don't have to be eternal to be effective. And so um, I'm, I'm going to be very brief. Go with me, if you would, if you have your Bibles. Thank you, praise team, for blessing us. And these musicians have just been a blessing. We appreciate you. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. 20. If you have it, say amen. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk for a few minutes this morning about the doctrine of the cross. The doctrine of the cross. Paul writes this letter to the Galatian church with a broken heart. He's struggling and he's frustrated. He's bewildered and he feels a sense of melancholy as he looks upon the climate of this church 
he had preached and he had labored in the gospel for several years to make this church one that is inclusive because the church should never be an exclusive fellowship, but rather than an in, it should never be an exclusive club, but rather an inclusive fellowship. He, 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 he tried to bring cultures together. He tried to bring people together. He tried to bring uh, the Gentiles and uh, the Judaizers and those who had Jewish background into one body and to glorify God as the corporate and collective body of Christ. However, the frustration came when there were certain clans and groups and cliques of Judaizers who wanted to lay guilt trips on the Gentiles because they were not circumcised. And because of that division, Paul had to address this issue. As a matter of fact, Pastor Simkins even had to put Peter in check because Peter wanted to be friends with the Gentiles and didn't want, wanted to be friends with the Judaizers and didn't want the Judaizers to know that he had relationships with the Gentiles because God wants us together and he has an issue with cultures clashing. So in light of all of that, Paul tried to address a division in the body of Christ. And not only did he address the division, but he had to chastise both the Judaizers and the Gentiles. He would say to the Judaizers that, that this is not your church. You don't own this. You can't control the people of God. You can't make Gentiles become who you are. He wanted them to know that you don't have to be circumcised in order to be saved. That you don't have to live by a bunch of rules or regulations and restrictions and requirements and regiments to live in the body of Christ, that we are free in Christ. And the Gentiles had come to know Christ in a very powerful way. And uh, But because of the pressure and uh, the schism, the Gentiles began to leave and shirk and become alienated from uh, the Galatian church. But not only did he deal with the Judaizers, he had to deal with the Gentiles as well. Because nobody ought to be able to make you leave the place that God has given you to develop and to be edified in the body of Christ. Don't let nobody make you leave your home. Don't let church folks discourage you and demean you and make you feel less than who God has called you to be. And that's why he said, oh, ye foolish Galatians, who did bewitch you that you should not obey the truth? Their love for God had become lulled in somebody's legalism. Christ had become transfixed into somebody's creed. Salvation had become stymied in somebody's system. Blessings got beaten in somebody's bureaucracy. Their trust in God had become terrorized by somebody's treatise. And when it was all said and done, Paul said, you better learn how to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Are y'all with me this morning? And he says, I know that there is a chasm. I know that there is a problem. I know that there is contention. I know that there is a problem. But let me tell you something. The only way that cultures can come together and the body of Christ can be who God has called it to be is when you understand that the oneness and unity can only be found at the cross. Do I have a witness? The crucifixion, the cross, what it teaches us 
is what is needed for the body to become harmonious and cooperative. Do I have a witness in here? Uh, 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 there, there is a difference. Let me say this before I get too excited. There, 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 there's a difference between theology and doctrine. And, and I titled this text, I titled this text, The Doctrine of the Cross, because too often we are engaged in theology as opposed to embracing doctrine. Theology is about culture, it's about class, it's about what side of the tracks you lived on or came from, it's about who your daddy was, who your mama is, who your siblings are, how you were religionized and socialized and culturized. It's about how you 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 were born. Do I have a witness? And, 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 and your understanding of God, your ability to embrace the salvation that God has given us can become tainted because you were not raised like that. And, and, and that's the difference between people who understand the difference because theology will will take you to places that your doctrine don't really want you to go. <laughs> doctrine, uh, hear me on this, is systematized truth. It is a system by which we come to understand what is important. It ain't important concerning your skin color or how you look and how you dress and how you... No, 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 that's not most important. What is most important and what brings people together is our collective understanding of what happened on Calvary. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Let me say this to you. That, 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 uh, yeah. Anything that is essential should never be circumstantial. We all join church on that. Anything that is essential should never be circumstantial. Rest upon chance, human agency, site, situation, location, or anything arbitrary like that. If you can't control it, it should not be a factor with respect to what you must have. If you need health care, you ought to be able to get it. If you need a place to live, your color should not make a difference. If you need food to eat, it should not be determined by your ethnicity. If it is essential, you need to be able to get it, and your circumstances should not make a difference. Do I have a witness in here? That's why Mama loved the song that said, there's room at the cross for you. There's a room at the cross for you. You may be high, you may be low, you may be rich, you may be poor, but there is room at the cross for you. If any man, somebody holler back at me, any man, any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. Don't matter if you're black or white. Doesn't matter who you are. If you're a Gentile or a Jew, you can come and find rest at the foot of the cross. Do I have a... That's what Paul, that's what Paul was talking about, Pastor Simpkins, when he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone somebody holler everyone everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek because if the truth be told the Jews and the Greeks both of them see God in a different way the Jews see God as a verb because they saw God through the lens of what God did for them. 
He brought them through the Red Sea, took them through the wilderness. God did some great things. Do I have a witness on that? But the, but the Gentiles saw him, or the Greeks saw him as a noun because they were super smart. They were intellectual. They knew Aristotelian arguments and platonic platitudes and Socratic syllogisms. They, they knew all of that intellectual stuff. So they wanted to be smart enough to define everything. So they saw God as a noun. But Paul says, scrap all that. God is not just a verb and he's not just a noun. He's a verb and a noun. He's a verb because it does what it does. And he's a noun because he is what he is. Do I have a witness in here? He's a noun because he's a way maker. He's a verb because he always keeps on making a way. He's a noun because he's a mother to the motherless. And he's a verb because he comforts me. He loves me. He looks beyond my faults and sees my needs. He's a verb and a noun. Somebody shout hallelujah. But what is it that makes the cross so powerful? I got 10 more minutes. What is it that, that, that the doctrine of the cross teaches us? It's right here in the text. I'm almost done. It's right here. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Can I work with that for just a minute? First of all, I am. Somebody help me say I am. That means the cross is personal. Come on. Somebody help me say the cross is personal. Which means that what I deal with in my challenges in life, the times that I've been betrayed, the times that I've been denied, the times that I've gone through challenges in my life are all personal to me. Come on, everybody has a personal challenge. Everybody has a journey. Everybody goes through their own unique experiences. Yours may not be mine and mine not be yours. Paul went through something different than Peter. Peter went through something different than Paul. Paul said, I've been left for dead. I've been shipwrecked. I've had a thorn in my flesh. I've had stuff in my life that nobody else has ever been through. I got saved differently than Peter. Peter walked with God and he walked with Christ for three years, got revelations and had relationship and he had to deal with that personal experience. Paul said, I was on my way to Damascus to kill all of y'all, but a light shined down from heaven and my life was never the same. The crucifixion and the essence of the crucifixion is different for everybody. Do I have a witness in here? That's why I deal with my challenges much different than you deal with yours. Because if we are walking through the valley of the shadows of death, there's a personal journey in the process of that that only God can lead you through. Come here, come here, David. I am, I, the Lord is, I shall not want. He maketh to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth beside the still water. He restoreth. He leadeth. In the path of righteousness for his name's sake, he anointed his head with oil, cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Do I have a witness? Blessed assurance. Jesus is. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praying my savior all the day long. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Somebody help me say it's personal. It's personal. I gotta bear my own burden. I gotta walk my own path. I gotta bury my own loved ones. I gotta carry my own cross. Say it. Glory, glory, glory. 
but 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 not only not only is the cross personal the cross is painful do I have a witness here? I said the cross is painful. You can't go through a crucifixion without dealing with the pain of betrayal. Somebody that was walking by your side but wasn't on your side. Do I have a witness in here? You got to deal with the betrayal in your life. Folk grinning in your face. Stabbing you in the back. Do I have a witness? That is a part of the cross but not only is a cross a issue of betrayal it is also an issue of denial come on you it's like bill withers who was dating uh who was dating denise nichols and denise nichols would take bill withers to these bougie parties and when she would take him to these bougie parties he wasn't that socially refined and when he was saying something that was he she was ashamed of him she would embarrass him because he didn't have much sophistication and sat warfare but when bill withers got done with it he said wait a minute I need to address it. So we wrote this song, and the song goes like this. You get me in a crowd of high-class people, and you act a real rude to me. But hey, 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 I want to spread the news. If it feels as good getting used, oh, you just keep on using me. Till you use me up. <laughs> That's what Peter did when the Gentiles were in the same restaurant as the Jews. He would act like he didn't know them. Have you ever been in a situation where at Solid Rock you got members that's all over you? But when you get to Memphis, they're too big to speak to you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. That's your crucifixion. Say yeah. I got to close. I got to close. The cross is painful. The cross is personal. But finally, I'm going to take my seat. The cross is paradoxical. If somebody help me say it's paradoxical. It looks like one thing. It ought to be one thing. But it's actually something else. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so even though you're being crucified with Christ, you got to keep on living. Paul said, nevertheless, I live. I'm done, y'all. I've been hurt. I've been betrayed. I've been crucified. I've been dogged out. The songwriter said, I've been lied on. I've been cheated. I've been talked about. I've been mistreated. I've been buked. I've been scorned. I've been talked about. Show as you're born. But in light of all of that, I'm going to keep on living. Somebody help me say, I'm going to keep on living. I'm going to keep on living. Yes. Yes. I got to close. But come here, Seely. Seely was told by Daddy Glover. You'll never be nothing. You'll never have nothing. You'll never go anywhere for three reasons. You're black. You're poor. And you're ugly. Seely said, wait a minute. I may be black. I may be poor. And I may be ugly. But I'm still here. Yes. I'm still living. I'm still going through. I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. If you're still living, if you're still here, in spite of your hurt, jump to your feet and say, I'm still here. I'm still living. I'm a survivor. I've been crucified, but I'm living. I've been lying on, but I'm living. Come on.
on, give God some praise, everybody. <laughs> Come on, shout, I'm still here. I'm still living. Glory to God. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Those of you online, glory to God. You might have been dogged out, but you've got the cross is for Christ. Amen. Come on, carry your cross. Carry your cross. Carry your cross. Everybody's standing. We're getting ready. Amen. I want to, I want to, I want to, come on, clap your hands for the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. The doctrine of the cross. The doctrine of the cross. Hallelujah. The doctrine of the cross. Yeah, that'll, that'll take us on into the resurrection day. The doctrine of the cross. Matter of fact, y'all know next week we're going to begin our Bible Institute. And the Bible Institute is titled Journey to and Through the Cross. And the subtitle is From the Cross to Pentecost. Glory to God. Journey to and through the cross. Tell somebody I'm bearing my own cross. But tell them, but Jesus is carrying it for me. Glory to God. Pray, pray for me. Come on, if anybody needs prayer.